Hello tanks and tankettes and welcome to the first of my brand new revamped channel videos. Well, excluding the actual announcement video itself of course. This is Danker 59 in the GW Tiger. Now I didn't have a good arty replay myself to hand or a good enough one. I've spent the last couple of days just intensively playing nothing but artillery but Alas, I couldn't quite get the replay I wanted, so instead I've gone with this one, and it's going to be a rather good match indeed. Now, as you can see, this is actually one of those vehicles that got a lick of fresh pixels, and it looks rather nice. And this is actually uh, a nice little side benefit to making this switch over to artillery now, is that there are now more and more artillery appearing that have been HD remodeled and it's a pretty minor thing it's not really the reason why I'm making the switch but it's nice that it's happening it's nice that these underappreciated uh, vehicles are finally getting some love now there are some of my own vehicles that uh, it's gonna be difficult to give up of things like the AMX 40 for instance but I, I have hope that we're gonna see I, I mean there are so many vehicles in this game, uh, artillery in particular, where they are based on the chassis of, you know, other vehicles. And in this case, it's a, a, a Tiger. In fact, I think it's the Tiger P, or is that the Tier 8? I think this one's just the Tiger. I can't remember. Anyway, but, I mean, how great would it be to have an AMX-40 artillery? Wouldn't that just be amazing? So there we go. The SD-1 rather kind of rudely took cover behind the rock so Danka was forced to go for the AMX 5100 instead and it was a pretty unlucky shot I've got to say um only 884 damage I mean against a French heavy tank that's pretty disappointing I mean Danka's matchmaking here is decent I mean, he's top tier but there's two enemy artillery against him so you can actually see he does at various points take a look to see uh, uh, if he can spot the, the firing traces. He's going to have to be careful about that. But yeah, I feel that was really unlucky there, that AMX 5100, not just immediately one-shotting him. And, uh, well, maybe he'll get a bit more lucky with this pattern. The pattern's not even full health. He's only got 1,200 out of 1,700 health. But uh, even though it was into the pattern's rear armor, it hit the turret. And, again, just shy of 900 hit points. So... Uh, it's a bit of a disappointing start to this one. A little bit disappointing. He didn't... I mean, he could have reasonably expected to one-shot both of those vehicles. But that's the nature of artillery, unfortunately. Um, you can't always uh, get the results that you want, even though you reasonably should be able to get them. And it is my hope that over the coming weeks and months and years ahead that... Uh, uh, as I, you know, make this switch, that uh, artillery itself will change and we'll start to see buffs to aim times, uh, buffs to damage, buffs to accuracy. I mean, there's a lot about artillery that could improve, but what's there right now is actually pretty good in of itself. And, you know, hopefully you're getting some sense of my newfound in enthusiasm from, uh, from that news video and from this video. Now, it's very unlikely to one-shot this guy. I mean, it's one of the best armoured tier 9 heavies in the game and so uh, taking off only 721 hit points I think that's pretty reasonable I think that's pretty fair uh, that's only what a third in fact I think that's more than a third uh, so I mean only doing that amount of damage frontally to a tier 9 heavy tank that that's one of the best tier 9 uh, armoured heavies in the in the game um yeah you can't really complain about that kind of shot so much. I think that was uh, that was uh, pretty reasonable, all things considered. Now he's now looking to support the southern flank. You can see there there's the potential of a nice uh, double target. Now the Lorraine unfortunately takes a big hit there, so he's not going to get that much health if he gets both of them. And another hit from the Lorraine. And then he puts another uh, shot out into the, uh, well this time the side armour of a tank and doesn't do a lot of damage. Now I can't tell by the way um, if the FPS on my preview screen's just gone a bit wonky but it might just be the preview FPS. So the actual video FPS might be fine. Uh, the FPS in this uh, replay itself was a bit weird at, at times. Um, I actually had to record it uh, or have a go at recording it several times just because it was not behaving itself and my plans to do this in 50 FPS, well they just didn't work at all. 
So he does get lit up by that marauding bulldog, but fortunately there's no artillery fire coming in his direction. He's probably unspotted at this point, so he just backs into place once again amidst all the cover of the trees and, uh, well, he'll have to be a little more careful because artillery's got a better idea of where he is now, but uh, as long as he moves a little each time, he'll be fine. Next up is this Yagtiger, who is half health, but RNG willing. Ah, there we go. It's a good hit. His first kill, and honestly, I feel, I mean, he's probably done something like, something like 4,000 damage at this point, which is, you know, that's okay. That's pretty average. Um, but for that... To, to be his first kill, to have had to wait uh, just over five minutes to get a kill. I mean, that was kind of unlucky, I have to say. That was kind of unlucky. But, like I was saying earlier, it, that's just how it goes with artillery. Sometimes the RNG, it, it's just not quite with you. However, he has got that first kill, and uh, that's that's fine. That's, that's a, 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 an extra bit of XP he'll get at the end of the, the game for that. So again, onto this E75 who vanishes uh, just as he pulls the trigger and mm, it doesn't actually hit but at least he gets the consolation of a little bit of splash damage. I mean a little bit. It wasn't a huge amount but you know it's better than nothing I suppose. If, you, if you're not actually going to hit something then uh, at least you get that, that minor bit of consolation that you can do a couple hundred points of splash damage. I mean there's always that. Sometimes you don't even get that lucky unfortunately. So, the 75 got killed by the Agatire, so that's fine. I mean, we're down to the last couple of tanks already. Um, most of the team didn't even make it to the five-minute mark. So, uh, the T-10 having moved up, uh, Danker decides it's a good time to support him and go for this Ferdy. So, Ferdy, meanwhile, um, he's, he's probably... I mean, even if Danker doesn't get him, he's probably not going to have a good day because the SU-100M1 is now firing at him and actually tracks him is very nice for Danker. Now, in some ways it was hardly worth pulling the trigger on that shot. That uh, Ferdinand had less than 600 health left. But sometimes you just have to accept that even though an enemy doesn't have a lot of health left, you, you need to take the shot anyway. You need to get the kill. And, I mean, prior to my newfound enthusiasm for artillery, I would have made this point about tier tank destroyers baby or, or something like the E100 that sometimes it can be frustrating if you've got that that large caliber shell to have to then pull the trigger on a very low health enemy but it was for the good of the team it was for uh, the, the good of you know winning the game so I think that was an important shot to have taken unfortunately the uh, the T10 did find the remaining enemy artillery but got hit in the face in the process so uh, he maybe got a little unlucky, and that was a bit of an odd replay dirt, but uh, anyway. Um, he maybe got a bit unlucky in that he didn't uh, one-shot the enemy arty. So, uh, yeah, it's it's looking a bit tense at this point. I mean, the T-10's down, so what they're left with is a tier 8 tank destroyer and a tier 9 tank destroyer, and the enemy team's got a tier 9 tank destroyer, so... None of them are especially fast. Although, having said that, actually, the SU-100M1 is actually reasonably fast. But the Tiger, not that fast, and the T-30 is definitely not that fast. So, it really is just a matter of uh, rooting out these final couple of enemies, if at all possible. Now, uh, Danka clearly thought that they would be, uh, or at least the T-30 would be, on the other flank. But actually, the T-30's gone back to defend the cap. And as you can see, the enemy artillery, who has taken some damage, is flanking round behind the SU-100M1, who is very low health. So, well, we can probably guess how that's going to go. The uh, M4043 fires on the move, so naturally, of course, it hits. But Dank has shot itself, um, again, firing on a vehicle that's on the move. You know, there's... there's Really no problem with that. That was a very skillful shot and uh, managed to take out that enemy artillery. So that has even things once again. It's now just that T-30 that's left. So the Ag Tiger is pushing up that side. It kind of is in the Ag Tiger's hands now. I mean, obviously artillery is a very important and necessary component of this game. But if it was just uh, artillery versus a T-30, well... Who knows what the uh, the outcome would be in that particular scenario. But 
As it is, this Yagtiger can move up and Danka can actually give him some cover. And he's actually indicating to this Yagtiger that he's going to be giving him cover. So we're down to this. 14-13 on the, uh, the, the scores at the top there. One enemy tank left, but if he's got a big gun, he could be rather nasty. So, yeah, we'll see uh, basically who gets the, the first shot off. We'll see if this T-30 is still in the same place. But given the fact that um, Danka is going to be giving this Yak Tiger cover, uh, I, I think he's got a very good chance of, of helping out here, provided the RNG is with him, of course. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty tense. This this T-30 could still be there. He could be somewhere else. I mean, just watching this right now, you can really feel the dramatic tension kind of bleeding through, I think. Um, hopefully you can as much as I can anyway, because uh, uh, th this kind of dynamic gameplay, it, it's, it can be quite tense to watch sometimes. It, it really does get the adrenaline going, so... I mean, maybe I should have started off the video by uh, advising everybody to uh, take a seat first, because uh, uh, you wouldn't want to be, you know, if you were standing up, there might be something dramatic happens that makes you go into a faint, for instance, or if you're holding a hot drink, you might, in surprise, you know, throw out your arms and suddenly there's tea everywhere, but um, I, I didn't. So if you have managed to fling a hot cup of tea everywhere, I do apologise, that was my fault. Now, in a surprise twist, the T-30 turns up on this flank, but although, um, I mean, he very skillfully, he drove forward, fired on the move and hit the T-30, uh, he unfortunately got incredibly unlucky there in that he didn't one-shot that T-30 for the thousand or so health that he had. He got left on about 62 health there, so that was really very bad luck for Danka. Um, I think the, the, the T-30 uh, just kind of skillfully angled enough so that his tracks actually absorbed some of that damage. So, well played by that T-30 there. I mean, that was uh, a very skillfully um, taken shot, as it were, uh, in, in that, you know, he was on the receiving end of it. And it was very unfortunate for Danka, because uh, uh, to come so close to, to killing that T-30, and by all rights, he should have. I mean, you know, with that kind of precisely, carefully aimed shot, um, I think, again, we're back to that word, or that, that phrase, reasonable expectation. I think he would have been fair in having the reasonable expectation with, with taking that, you know, driving forward and taking that kind of shot uh, pretty much as soon as the T-30 popped up there. Um, I, I personally, you know, making that kind of shot in an artillery would expect to hit that at least nine times out of ten and kill what I'm shooting at. But sadly, this was that one time out of ten, uh, as far as Danka is, is confirmed, uh, concerned. rather. However, they're going to win anyway. The Yag Tiger, having driven around the other flank, um, has had enough time to cap. The T-30 was never going to get back in time. He's just firing off a couple of victory shots there. And as we can see, well, this was a pretty decent game for Danka. Indeed, he got an ace mastery, he got his first mark of excellence, and a Gauls medal along with a top gun. So it was pretty reasonable. And he did have some bad luck in this one. I mean, let, let's be fair about this. Uh, there were two enemy artilleries to Danker's one. And, uh, you know, 6,000 damage, 1,000 base XP. I mean, it was a pretty good result. But he, 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 it, was, it was one of those games where you just feel like you're chipping away for a little bit of damage here, a little bit of damage there. And, um, he didn't really get any of those, those nice high damage shots that you would expect for artillery. I mean... Also look at there, I mean, nine shots fired, eight hits, uh, and eight penetrations, one splash damage. I mean, missing one shot was just such bad luck, but at least he had the consolation of doing a bit of splash damage there. So, um, all in all, I mean, uh, I think this was a, a good game in, in the end, and uh, even though damage-wise it wasn't spectacular, he didn't have any particularly spectacular shots on the whole, um, I think everything was very kind of calm and considered and... and, and you know, very skillfully aimed. Um, it, it still, you know, it's one of those games where you just get a little bit of damage here and a little bit of damage there, and it does add up in the end. So he did actually get a pretty reasonable score at the end of that one, as you can see. 
So, there we go, the first of my new style, new look artillery games. We'll definitely be having some of my own coming up uh, over the coming days and weeks, so uh, obviously keep an eye out for those. And of course, I'll be showing lots of uh, viewer artillery replays as well, because I know they'll also be very popular. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, and if you have, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below complimenting Dank on his very skillful gameplay, you can uh, sub to my channel if you aren't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.